So I was checking out another app today. This one's called Blinkist, and it provides summaries, kind of like cliff notes of popular books. But this interaction here caught my eye where they've got a kind of a button row that turns into a fixed header. So it's similar to the sticky header tutorials I've done recently, but this one's got that twist of the button row morphing into a fixed header. And I thought that would be a fun one to recreate inside of Flinto for Mac. So let me show you how I did it. So I've made this crude recreation of the UI. I've got the header section here with the name of the book and the title. Then I've got that floating button row. And then I've got a bunch of text here just so I have something to scroll through. So let me open the preview and just show you how you can scroll this. Okay, so really simple. And I'm gonna do a sticky header effect where this turns into a fixed header at the top of the screen. Now I've got a hidden title bar here and let me fade that in. So this is just waiting to be revealed because that UI has that header which appears as the button row reaches the top. Okay, so we're gonna create this with a behavior. So I've put a group around almost all the layers here and I'm gonna go into the behavior designer. Now I need a new state and in this new state, the header will be revealed. So I'm gonna fade that in and the button row is going to be right up against the bottom of that header. And the important thing to know here is how far up that moved because that's gonna dictate the scroll range that I'm gonna use. So let me undo that and let's look. The Y position of this is 189. So I'm gonna move it up to here and now the Y position is 64. So that means that the scroll range going from the scroll group on the initial state, when we make the link, it goes to the new state with a scroll gesture. That range, right now it's zero to 100, but it's gonna be 189 minus 64, and you can do that math right inside of the input here. And that's the difference between those two Y positions, the starting position of this button row and the end position of it. Now I want that range to be exactly the same as the distance that this moves, so that as you scroll, this moves at the same rate, and it looks like it's just scrolling along with everything else. But because that range ends at 125, it's not gonna keep moving after you get to that point, which means it'll be stuck in place. So the next thing to do is to morph this because it morphed into kind of a fixed header that didn't have these rounded corners anymore. So I'm gonna take the rounded corners away and I'm gonna widen it so that it hits either edge. And I'm gonna adjust these uh, button labels a little bit so that they're more centered. All right, so that's the animation. And I don't need to worry too much about the easing or the speed of the animation because it's gonna be controlled by that scroll gesture that I have here which takes me to that new state. So I start scrolling and you can see that header is starting to fade in and the button row is starting to morph and there it goes, it sticks to the top and then does the opposite as I come back down. Cool, so that's a super easy effect to do and I think I've pretty faithfully recreated uh, what they had in the um, Blinkist app UI. The only other thing left to do now is to handle the case where I scroll back down and keep going because this isn't part of the scroll group it's just something that we're moving along based on scroll position so i need to handle the case where you scroll downwards and it turns out i explained how to do that in the last sticky header tutorial so i'm not going to rehash it in this one but i'll put a link to the other tutorial if you want to see how to do that so here it is with that second behavior set up to accommodate scrolling in the other direction and now it's all good well, I hope you enjoyed that sticky header tutorial. That's the third one that I've done recently. If you want to go back and check out the other two, I did a very basic sticky header and then one with multiple headers where each subsequent header pushes the previous one off the top of the screen. And remember, I'm posting daily videos now. So if you have a suggestion for tutorial, please leave a comment. And I don't get a ton of comments. So if you leave a suggestion, there's actually a really good chance that I'll make a video based on your comment.